the same. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin. And today I have the awesome pleasure of sitting with my girlfriend, Darlene Dixon. How are you, Darlene? I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. Well, Darlene and I are old friends from at and Where else? <laughs> it seems like the majority of my guests have worked with me. We have history together. We've been trained by the best, you mm, know. Yes. We worked hard. We know what it is to work hard. And today, the reason that I have Darlene on the show is uh, Darlene is a publisher. You mm -hmm. publish books. Uh, Manifold Grace Publishing House. Yes. Uh, Darlene has had the awesome pleasure. All of these books have been published by you. Yes. And this particular book, I'm very, you know, I'm <laughs> kind of biased because this is The Watchman by Javon Bertrand. And anybody that uh, has been following me on the show saw Javon on the show with me mm -hmm. and he had this book in him but it hadn't been published yet and I hooked him up with Darlene and now he has a published awesome product yes, that is out there for sale but there are other books that Darlene has published and uh, you're doing a wonderful job I'm going to talk you. a little bit about um, Manifold Grace Publishing House, you say your mandate is a gift from God. Uh, your purpose is to provide a vehicle for other authors to get their testimony stories and inspirational messages published. You're born again believers, but you will publish work not limited to Christian subject. Um, so in addition to Christian or spiritual topics, you know, bring us your cookbooks, books on cars, novels, etc. You will only reject work that's not of an inspirational, uplifting, redemptive, or positive nature. Absolutely. That right there sounds good. <laughs> to say a little bit about Darlene, uh, you are a published author yourself. Yes. You worked for 36 years in customer service at AT&T. You have two children. Your son James is currently a writer in Ann Arbor. And your daughter Jessica recently received a master's degree in the School of Counseling from University of Central Florida, and they both attended the University of Michigan. Yes. Okay, and her book, your book, Five Revelations, Improve Your Relationship with God, was your debut publication. And at at and you authored a lot of training materials and other materials covered under intellectual property agreements uh, with at and So you were an instructor, process engineer, and you were responsible for developing, negotiating, documenting processes to be used in customer service. So first I want to thank you for that because um, <laughs> At AT and T, I had a call center and customer service. That was my forte. You right. Know? So we had a lot, a a lot of training that was good that we used for customer service. But one thing that I always said to my service reps was take the information that they give you here, use it to be the best person that you could be on the job, but also let it spill over into your personal lives to make you the best person that you can be in life. So, absolutely, again, I thank you, I thank you. So Darlene, the first thing that I wanted to um, ask you is, when did you know that you wanted to be a publisher? So was it your book first and then the publishing or how did this happen? Well, funny story. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I wanted to be a publisher. Okay. I thought I was a writer. Okay. And I'm, I am a writer. Mm -hmm. And um, I published my first book in 2007. But um, when I retired, um, I, I had 36 years worth of AT&T stuff I had accumulated wow. that I had to bring home with me. Okay. And, um, and going through that, I found information that I had started researching mm -hmm. about the publishing industry from as far back as 1997. Wow. And then again, after I published my book, there it was again. I had started accumulating this same information. Right. And then while in um, going through breast cancer, fighting, beating breast cancer, right. yeah, um, the Lord that. was speaking to me again mm -hmm. about a publishing company. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, God, if this is what you want me to do, I need to have a name for it. Right. And I went to our normal um, Wednesday night Bible class and my pastor was preaching um, and she said they had a bookstore mm -hmm. called Manifold Wisdom something. And I heard that word manifold mm -hmm. and you know, which is like tens of thousands, you know. Okay. And I thought about that and I said, grace, you know, his grace is just, 
been uncountable right. in my life. Amen. And so it stuck. Okay. And when I had a name, I knew that it was a baby that I was to bring forth. All right, right. Now, so you, you we were just uh, talking earlier and you shared that you saw the story with Kim, Kimberly Harris, who yeah. was a good friend of ours that was here and that is a breast cancer survivor. I never knew that you uh, were a breast cancer survivor yeah. as well. So I just thank God for you. I thank God Amen. that, you know, he uh, puts people in our paths. You know, when we cross paths, it's not on, you know, it's not by chance. It's definitely on purpose that our paths cross because right. although we knew each other from AT&T and, you know, um, I, I believe that it was on Facebook, you know, and people talk about Facebook, but Facebook is a great networking tool it because is. I believe that it was on Facebook that I saw you were having a, um, you were doing a class on writing a book, you yeah. know, publishing your book um, at the Redford Library. So I attended that class and, and I had, you know, such a good time. And the way that you um, taught, you know, I guess you being a trainer, you know, you already had that, you know, there standing there. And at that time you were with some, you have another young lady. Did she do the graphic designs or it was? Well, she has a publishing company also. Okay. And so we collaborated to, to do the workshop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was a really a, a great workshop. So now you write your book, you know, God has given you a name, Manifold Grace Publishing. And so you, I mean, so God has given you a name. You are going to become a publisher. What's the first thing you do? I mean. I go, really, me, God, are you sure? <laughs> and uh, I went, I pulled all that old research that I had already done, okay. but decided that I didn't have time to do it, mm -hmm. and oh, it's too much, right. and, and this, this is just a figment of my imagination. Okay. This is not God speaking to me. And uh, once I got over myself, okay. I actually began to hear him. And you talked about, we call them destiny intersections. Mm -hmm. um, a, a couple that adopted me as the godmother for their children, who I met when I was singing in the choir. Okay. Turns out he was a graphic artist, mm -hmm. and so he helped me put my website together, wow. and he helped me design book covers, and everything that I needed, somehow, I, by chance, no. Mm -hmm. Exactly. By destiny, by purpose, yes. that person appeared to help me. Right. learn what I need to know. And of course, I had to do my own study. Exactly. You know, I had to put my, do my due diligence. Right, right. And learn how to do some things. Okay. And, and it's amazing because um, at home, I have all of these books that, you know, that I've purchased and maybe never read. And I always know that it's for such a time as this. You never mm -hmm. know, but whenever I need something, I could go right to that library and pick out Absolutely. something that I need. And I ask myself during that time, like, why are you buying this book? Mm -hmm. What, you know, really what it is for? But I've learned that, you know, what God has for you, it is definitely for you. Amen. So. To the person that has a book in them, like what is some of the advice that, I mean, because I think, you know, um, we always think that we have to come with a 745 page manifold or oh, all of this writing yeah. that we have to do. What, what are you, what is some of the, the, the advice that you would give someone who really has a book in them? What would be the first thing that you would tell them to do? Um, start with really, honing in on your concept for your book. Okay. What is it you want to talk about and what is it you want to say and then make an outline. Okay. You have to start with an outline and people hate that, you mm -hmm. know, people that have been to school, oh God, I hate making <laughs> outlines, you know. Yes. But and, and so I say, well, think of it as a table of contents All then. Right. Envision your book. Mm -hmm. Envision the cover. Imag go in Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. and um, see where your book would sit on a shelf. All right. So you, be, you begin to get a vision of it. And then now that you have that vision, start putting your words together. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to tell? And then in what order are you going to tell it? Right. And this is where the outline or the table of contents comes in handy. It helps you stay focused, be organized, and it makes sure that you say everything you need to say. Right. People do ask about that. They think they have to have so many. I've heard people say, well, somebody said you need 10 chapters and, a, you know, 10 pages per chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that your book is the size it is when you're done saying what you have to say. Okay. Right. And so that's the important factor. If you're trying to hit a number, again, that's the wrong purpose. Right. 
make sure that you've said it and said it well exactly. and completely. Exactly. It's uh, uh, amazing because as I'm um, interviewing different guests, something from another guest will always come back to me. You just talked about visualizing, you know, going into Barnes & Noble, and I have Rassandra Kennebrew on here, and she was, like, reinventing herself. And she was homeless at one time, mm. and she just wanted this loft off the water, a condo off the water. And she would envision herself in the condo, go to different places, and sit in the, you know, kitchen, or, mm. you know, go through it as if it was hers, as if she was purchasing it. And the way she's in a condo now off the water, awesome. you know, and the way awesome. that she got that is only by the grace of God. You right. know, you would know that there is no way anybody could have manufactured that. But we are, you know, we often will achieve the things that we think that we can. You know, if we trust and we just put our mind to it, there's really nothing that we can't do. The universe Absolutely. is the Lord's and everything therein. And so if we believe it enough and do the, you know, do due diligence to do the right things, you know, those things will often uh, come to us. Um, I myself, uh, you know, I have a book in me, Life After the Crack of Dawn, you know, because oh, I, that's had awesome. a, I had a crack addiction. And so I, I have a chapter that I've written, but just like you said, I have like outlined Every, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. Every chapter has a title. And so what I'm trying to do now is go in and put the story into the, you know, the titles of those chapters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you and I will be sitting down. We'll be talking um, again last week, my guest. You know, she's a storyteller, and she was asking me to tell my story because she, you know, I want to go before a crowd and tell the story. And I thought I could tell that story, and I thought I could tell that story <laughs> well until I sat with Satori Shakur, you know, and she started pulling things out of me. I'm thinking, like, wait, I don't know if I'm ready to tell this story, you know, but it's a lot of work, and that you think it's easy because it's your story, you right. know. And nobody can tell your um, testimony as well as you, you can, yeah. you know, but when you think about it, you know, when you want to be a blessing to other people, you right. have to tell the entire story and you have to tell it in a way that it, you know, who, who's your audience? You know, right. who, who are you trying to tell the story to right. and what is it that you expect them to get out of it? So, you know, um, it's, it's um, just very important that when you go to write a book, that the book Say it. So you're not writing a book just to write a book. Exactly. Yeah. And that that is a couple of things. I, I do writers' workshops also, and so one of the things that I well, a couple of the several things that, out of what you just said mm -hmm. are very important to me and uh, important to authors or people who want to write books. Okay. And one is um, you do have to tell the whole story, and you do have to be honest. Exactly. Because people can tell, and if they're reading your book and it's not hitting an honesty quotient mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, I'm going to read you later. Exactly. And they become a coaster <laughs> or, you know, uh, fall behind the back of the couch, right. those kind of things. And that's not what we want. So you want to tell your story and you want to someone else to benefit from what you've experienced. Yes. Uh, writing it just because something happened to you and you need to tell somebody is not enough of a reason. Okay. You have to have some redemptive um, qualities about it because... People want happy endings, right. and people also want to be encouraged and inspired yes. by yes. what they're reading. And I believe that there is a way to tell your story so that you strip, mm -hmm. but not naked. Amen, amen. And I like so. that. Strip, <laughs> but not naked. I definitely, that that right there is good. Yeah. That is good, okay, because I'm visualizing. I'm a visual person. But anyway, <laughs> But so like your workshops, how do you know, what do you bring? What are your workshops? How do how how are they set up? Um, right now I'm doing it at my church. I go to Detroit World Outreach. And okay. and so every once a quarter we've been doing um, different types of workshops. And that's primarily where I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am packaging the curriculum to do a road show. Okay. And so that, you know, um, organizations or just in general people. Mm -hmm. um, it's finding a time is a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. now, but I know that that's an important part of what he's called me to do. Okay. Um, I can't publish you if you haven't written. Mm -hmm. And some people just need to know what the process is and what they need to do to write a book and, right. and how to tell their story well. So right. uh, I'm in the process of really working on packaging 
the uh, the workshops to go outside of the church as well. Okay. Now, you are doing the workshop in the church, but it's not inclusive to just members of your church. Can anybody come to your church oh, and sure. do a workshop? And so that's Detroit World Outreach. How would they contact you? If somebody wanted to attend one of your workshops or they wanted to get in touch with you to have you publish their book, how do they get in touch with you? Um, I have a website, okay. uh, www.manifoldgracepublishing.com, mm -hmm. and they can also email me, Darlene, at mgph, okay. that's manifoldgracepublishinghouse.org, okay. mgph.org, okay. and they can also call me at 248-799-9771, okay. and I'll be happy to, you know, do whatever we need to do to get you rolling. Okay, so now somebody comes to you and they have a book. They, you know, they have this book. They want this book published. You go through, kind of walk me through the steps that you take to help them bring this book out because I'm sure everybody that gives you a manuscript is not, oh, okay, great book, publish it, and you send it on. What are you, what are some of the things that well, you Well, you're can... exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that does not happen. Uh, and one of the most important lessons that I had to learn myself okay. was that you have to be edited. All right. Because because I was a writer, <laughs> when I wrote my book, I was, okay, here's my book. Right. And I bought the editing package not thinking anything was going to come of it. And when I got it back, oh, they changed my words. <laughs> they, what? You know, so it's it's funny to me now when, when uh People said, boy, you put a lot of marks on okay. that, you know, but um, I had to learn the value of that, really. Okay. Um, also, because we're writing things that we know, mm -hmm. we have to picture our audience. And so you have to write. My, my audience is always someone who's at home in their favorite chair. Okay. Uh, with a Pepsi or a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and my book. All right. And I'm honored that they're going to read my book. All right. Now, they don't know me from Adam, mm -hmm. so I have to tell the complete story, mm -hmm. which means you have to get it out of your head mm -hmm. and be complete with all the details. Right. And uh, so what I do in my process is, if you were to hand me a manuscript, mm -hmm. I would tell you that I'm going to read your introduction and your first chapter okay. and I'm going to edit it and then I'm going to send it back to you so that you see what I've done mm -hmm. you see how I work and we're in agreement okay. maybe I've misunderstood something that you said and I've edited it improperly All right. then you need to tell me what it is you're trying to say and not only that if the question was raised then we need to fix that All right. so we work on those things we because we have to be in agreement yes I don't want to get to the end of the process and have someone unhappy with what I've done. Makes so sense. we do that up front. Mm -hmm. and this is what I'm going to do. And are you in agreement? Yes, fine. Then we move forward. Okay. I continue editing the, the entire work. And then I do all aspects of publishing. Mm -hmm. um, I format the book. Okay. I design the cover. Um, get you barcodes, ISBN numbers. Mm -hmm. I file a copyright on your behalf. All right. um, you have exclusive rights to your book. All right. I do not. Um, at this point, I am looking for marketing people to help my authors. Okay. Um, I've only been at this a year, so uh -huh. I don't have all the pieces, but I can get you published. Hey, I, and <laughs> I know that. Okay, <laughs> that is something that I definitely know. Um, so, like most of the books, and I'm going to talk about "Free to Be Strong and Victorious." This is by Valerie C. Boyce. The people that you're publishing, like, do you know Valerie? Do you know her personally? I do. Yes. Okay, and. And um, is this her first published book? And it was my first published book wow. as well. Okay, okay, yeah. look at God. See, that would be the one that's, <laughs> that's first on there. Right. So how, how was this experience for you? It was, it, we learned a lot together. Okay. And I'm very happy to say that Valerie has gone on to become a self-publisher herself. All right. So that's she good. published her own next book. Great. And I'm just very proud of her for that. Great, great. Um, it's awesome. Strong and victorious. Free to be strong and victorious. And it's a book of confessions and prayers that mm -hmm. um, uh, she was a woman who had lupus okay. and, you know, the, the trials and things that associated with that. Yes. So um, she had to encourage herself. All right. 
Yeah, well, that's great. That mm -hmm. is a great book. As I think about, um, you know, the many books that have been written, the books that I've read, and I, I listen to you when you say you take that um, first chapter, which really makes sense because there's no use of you going through the entire book, editing the entire book, and then somebody coming back and say, well, you know, why did you do this or why did you right. do that? So when you do the introduction in the first chapter, are, are your... Um, the people who have given you their book, are they at some point and sometimes compelled to go back with, because they see now how you edit and what you do? Let me go back through here and maybe make some changes and then bring it back to you, or do they wait for you to make all the changes? Well, that would be wonderful, <laughs> and maybe I will make that a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> but no, it okay. does not happen that way. Okay. Okay. And then sometimes, you know, people are... Uh, let's say tentative. They're a little tentative about releasing it, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to, no, give it here. Okay. Give okay. it here. We're going to actually do this okay. now. So um, I, I don't, or I don't want to give them too much of an opportunity to rewrite the whole book okay. again. All right. Because sometimes that's just a delay tactic. All right. And it's just, procra it becomes procrastination. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe in a no procrastination zone with our projects. That's good. Because I'm sure that, you know, you start to write this book and you think, okay, I want this book and I want it published. And then you sit, you know, like you said, okay, I'm going to give it to you. You know, you, you go and you edit and I see all that red that's going through there. I'm <laughs> like, I may not give this back. You know, I may just wait on it. Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I'm not, you know, because I know we are procrastinators by nature, you know. And then we have that fear, you know. Yes. But anything yes. that God brings us to he'll bring us through I definitely believe that Amen. yes I truly believe that now you say your son is a, a writer in Ann Arbor yes I need to actually update my website he is an op-ed editor for the Detroit News wow. now wow wow yeah. so so writing runs in the family yeah he's very good that's good he that's actually and I'm sorry I I didn't um, have a copy but uh, he actually wrote the foreword to my book okay and uh, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. This is about me. Okay. I hope I live up to what he's written, I, I you know, know in the right. forward. But he's a very good writer. I know that's right. So, like, right now you're doing the workshop at DWO. Are, are there any upcoming workshops that, you know, people can get into? Because, I mean, although I sat through, you know, one of the workshops, like I said, at the Redford Library, I think I would really like to, you know, come back in on, an, yeah. on another one. You were talking about the different... Um, every quarter, the different, and you call them something, vision? Life sessions. Vis, vis, vision life sessions that you were doing at DWO. What's coming up now, you know, next? We're probably gonna be uh, springtime, uh, maybe late first quarter okay. of next year, gonna do that again. Mm -hmm. And then some of the other sessions, uh, we had legacy planning okay. for, you know, where people understand the legalities of heritage right. and leaving mm -hmm. something that's something we're we're bad about mm -hmm. we don't leave things for our families and mm -hmm. that and so um, they, they've been teaching people about the legal aspects of that mm -hmm. and how to set up your uh, finances and and those kind of things so that happens okay. and, and you know when you as I just hear you say legacy you know because um, and I hear you say finances but I'm just tell my kids I'm not leaving y'all nothing I'm just joking <laughs> No, no, really. <laughs> um, but, but, but even like knowledge or history of the family, I think that's good because absolutely. Um, a lot of times, you know, like, you know, my um, great grandmother um, was um, of Indian heritage, or they, you know, my great grandmother's name was Leroy Turnipseed. Her husband's name was Lee Turnipseed. They were from oh, Macomb, wow. Mississippi, you know. And I've Googled and I've saw. Um, you know, I'm finding out just a little bit of information, but I would really like to know where Leroy came from, where Lee came from, and that information is not handed down from generation to generation. And I know we're yeah. doing it now with Heritage.com or, you know, different Other things, places. but I think that that's something that's very important that we write and, you know, leave something for our children so they understand the history and everything that, you know, people before us have gone through and where they come from, from. you know, and so they'll know what to stand for so that's good so it's you funny say, that you mentioned that because mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, I haven't I'm working with an author now oh my goodness he's done just an epic piece mm -hmm. of tracing his family okay. he has put years 
okay. into this, and he even has photographs. Right. He's traced his family back to France. Mm -hmm. yeah. And w there were two brothers, and when they came here, one, it's like one went north and one went south, okay. so one was a slave and the other one was raised they're not quite sure, but they're trying to trace down that part of the story now. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I mean, when I look at some of his work, the things he's uncovered about his family, right. it is just, it's, it's wonderful. And I really, again, you know, when I talk about past guests, I had a young lady, Rosina uh, Johnson on here, and she has a Duba Society that um, she does that. She will give you classes, you know, classes oh. where you can, uh, she helps you, you know, uh, learn how to get your heritage. And uh, we talked about that during the show. As a matter of fact, I joined her organization. And so, you know, some of her services are available once you become a member, okay. you know, of that organization. So I'm really looking forward to because um, I definitely, it, it's just something about Leroy Turnip Seeds, you know, she was so strong and I just remember her so very well and, you know, just, you know, her skin tone and the firmness of her and I think a lot of, you know, the, the my tenacity and being strong and standing mm -hmm. up, you know, I got, you know, from her because Leroy did not play, okay? <laughs> <You> <laughs> You <laughs> did not mess with Leroy, so I think, you know, kind of it skips over, you know, generations, but I can identify with her so very well, so. There has to be a story about how she was named Leroy exactly. and he was, he was named, named Lee. Lee. Exactly, I, and, and I definitely want yeah. to know, you know, that story as well. But now getting back to um, Manifold Grace, you know, I, I, I always say this, and people know, I know that sitting with you, you know, I know you. I know that everything you do is going to be with integrity. It's going to be with character. The people on the right to their books, they, you know, they don't have yes. to worry. You hear a lot of times about people writing a book and you publish it, but the book never is not yours anymore. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. How, how is that? The business of books. That, mm -hmm. And that was part of the first workshop that we did that mm -hmm. you attended. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. Uh, traditional publishers pay you to write a book is in effect what happens, if you can get into one. Okay. To even get into a traditional publisher, you need to have an agent. Okay. And that agent, so you audition yourself mm -hmm. and your work for the agent. The agent now goes out to sell you to a publisher. Okay. The publisher is going to put substantial money into your project. They're going to market you, mm -hmm. but they also are going to have a say in what you've written and how you've said it. Okay. And they're going to own the rights to it. Uh -huh. So they're paying you for your rights. and um, So they pay you up front? Yes, they give you an advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you sell the book, and say you sell millions, of, do you still get paid every time? You get per royalties. Game? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Right. Royalties are typically between 15, maybe 20% mm -hmm. of total sales. Okay. So just being a publisher, and I, I mean, you know, this is just your opinion, What's the benefit of this is what you do, is this called more self-publishing yes. than, you know, being with the... I am a self-publishing company. Okay. So I help people pay to publish, basically. Okay. And that's really the world, you know, even the, um, the traditional publishers all have self-publishing houses. Okay. So it's kind of a new industry. It's, a, it's it, The industry is evolving and changing. Okay. There are places where you can go and they you can step by step walk through doing it. Um, I'm the professional who will do it for people who don't have that desire to. Right. Because it's yeah, there, there's a lot of details and mm -hmm. a lot of things that um, you need to take into account if you're going to publish just from the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you think once you've written a book, man, oh. no, you're, you're not done anything. Right. <laughs> you've done step one. Okay. And so some of the other steps we help people do. And, and that's, that's good. I, and again, I know that, you know, what you say you're going to do, you will do. You do a lot of research. You yes. find, um, you know, you, you just, okay, the, the, the right niche for the people. So you say you... Is this your design or the guy who helps you designs the cover or do they come with their own cover? You know what I'm saying? Do they have their own ideas for a picture? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes they do. Okay. Um, actually, Javon had his <laughs> his cover drawn. Yes, I, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he came to me with his own cover. Okay. Um, 
I generally can have a concept, will have a concept mm -hmm. um, based on what I know the book is about. Okay. And we try to match those up. If the author has ideas, mm -hmm. we try to, uh, well, we don't try to. It is our purpose okay. to make that idea happen. Right. And I rely on the graphic artist to do that. Okay, that's that's really good. So if somebody has a book in them and they just have a title of their book and they've written the book so you can come up with that catchy uh, cover mm -hmm. that will, you know, when I look at this, the heart of a servant, you know, and I see that heart, you know, I want to read that book, you know, oh, as a matter of fact, is this book for sale? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm definitely a servant. Why, yes, I carry all of my author's work okay, for sale. <laughs> okay, I definitely think I would uh, like to pick this book up, The Heart of a Servant, because um, that is definitely my heart. I'm here to serve, so I would definitely like to read that book. Amen. Yes. So, um, Darlene, if again, there is somebody out here and they have a book in them and they want to write this book and they just don't know the how to start. If they, you know, they've struggled with it, you know, maybe they've started writing, they put it down, they started writing, they put it down. What do you say to that person who, um, is struggling with trying to get their words on paper to be a blessing, first to release it from themselves and oh, then to bless somebody else. You said it right there. Mm -hmm. um, when you begin to write your story, mm -hmm. you do release it. You release yourself from it. Mm -hmm. And it really is cathartic. You hear people talking about it all the time. Man, when, once I told that story, mm -hmm. if I felt good. Yes. I felt free, and you do, mm -hmm. because we all have things inside of us that once we put them on paper, we give air to them yes. and they begin to breathe on their own, mm. then they no longer breathe inside of us. Right. And so we've set them free and our words go out there to others who are maybe dealing with the things that we write about yes. to help them. And I, you know, Nike, just get, get started. Right. Now I do do story consultation also. Okay. So I will meet with people and, you know, I talk with them, kind of interview them, find out what what their book is about and kind of do a rough little outline for them okay. um, because people think it's really difficult, but it's not. Okay. It's really common sense. You know, we've read books. Mm -hmm. So when you read a book, mm -hmm. you know what things you like and what yeah. things you don't like. Right. You know the kind of order. Like if, if you start at one place and you finish at a plate and you yeah, Kevin like showed me how you got there I'm right. like what am I what reading is that? yes exactly you know? so um we we try to just bring that out in people okay you can do this you just got to get started mm -hmm. have a plan mm -hmm. um one of the my another one of my workshop isms okay is to have a GPA all right what's that have a goal mm-hmm why am I writing this book? You touched on that earlier. You want to inspire someone. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to inform someone, whatever. You have a plan. Mm -hmm. When am I going to write? I suggest always in the vein of the no procrastination zone that you set up a time to write. Okay. Make it part of your schedule. Um, my wonderful son, who I referenced before, mm -hmm. told me when I was writing my book and he called, Ma, how's it going? Who I just don't have time. Mm -hmm. And he, what he said to me was, uh, Ma, you got an hour every day to write. Okay. And I, you know, I kind of gave him that look. <laughs> and he said, just don't watch Law and Order for mm. me. And I said, mm -hmm. well, that college education is paying <laughs> off there, isn't it, son? Exactly. But um, we do. We, If it is a project, mm -hmm. especially if God has put something on our hearts, right. we need to be obedient. Yes, we do. Because if you ain't writing that book, you're disobedient. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to um, make it a priority. Okay. And you do that by planning. It's okay. not magical. All right. It's not mystical. It's, it's simple. Mm -hmm. Make some time for it. Set aside time, place, and space. All right. And maybe it's an hour every night. Maybe it's three hours on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, you know, a Tuesday once a month. Right. Whatever you can work with. Make it happen. Fit it in your schedule okay. and then get started. Okay. So that's G and P. We'll see A. Oh, I'm sorry. Audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to know who you're writing to. Okay. Um, I asked my, my students, okay, who are you writing this book for? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we want everybody to buy the book, but who are you writing it for? Right. 
who is going to benefit from it? Who will relate to what you're yeah. writing? Yeah. And once you envision that person, then you know how to speak. Mm -hmm. You know how to what language to speak. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be careful with jargon, but if you're writing a book for medical students, it's going to be full of jargon. Exactly. So you have to know who you're speaking to. Okay and um, so that you're speaking the language that they will relate to. Right. I think the information that your son gave you is really good because I, uh, <laughs> too funny, I purchased a, uh, I have a stationary bike that I got for my 35 years with AT&T. I did so, too. Did you? Do you ride yours? Okay. So anyway. <laughs> I bought this little <laughs> iFit card to go inside of it, uh -huh. and so I'm riding along on the little card, and, and hi, this is Sharon, you know, I'm your iFit instructor, and you could do anything for one minute, you know, and so, you know, even <laughs> if I just wrote something for a minute, wrote something for an hour, five minutes, mm -hmm. ten minutes, and that made sense to me, you know, although I did do 30 minutes one time, you know. <laughs> A minute at a time, you know, you could do anything for one minute. So, yes, that's good information yeah. to just start somewhere and just to do it, you know. So um, that really is um, good information. So, again, uh, Darlene, I want you to tell the people how they can contact you if they wanted to um, get some consultation, if they wanted more information about Manifold Grace, first give them your website. My website is manifoldgracepublishinghouse.com mm -hmm. and I can be reached at email. As a matter of fact, if you go on the site, there's a link to contact me, okay. but my email address is darlene at mgph.org. Okay. And of course, um, call me, 248-799-9771. All right, well, I wanna thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, come uh, on the show with me. I'm gonna keep this book off of yes, here on this please. side because <laughs> I definitely want to uh, purchase that book from you. Um, it's always a pleasure whenever I'm in your presence. I want to thank you on behalf of Javon. I know he's thanked you already, you know, <laughs> yes, but it's just really good. Great. Again, when God put people in your path that can be a blessing to you and to others as well. So I know that the hand of God is all over Manifold Grace Publishing Amen. Company. Amen. And I know that you're going to do great things. You know, I can't wait until one day I'm on the show holding up. Your Life after the crack book. of dawn, exactly. I look exactly. forward to that. Yes, I will uh, definitely be getting with you uh, real soon. I'm not going to have this show and you talk about procrastinators and I continue to procrastinate <laughs> on getting that book out. So uh, today I am going to end my show as I always do to the public, to the people who watch this show weekly. I'm hoping that the information that is coming to you is a blessing to you. Definitely, if you have a book in you, if you have a story to tell, definitely get um, on the Manifold Grace uh, website and get that information off from Darlene. And uh, again, I thank you for watching this show, for tuning in each and every week. And I will end the show as I always do, from my beating heart to your beating heart. I love you. You understand? Okay.